What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are all having an incredible day I know I am if you are I need you to smash that like button because the likes are down Okay, I haven't gotten 10,000 likes on a video in a while and it's making me depressed So depressed that I called Susan down herself to kick me in the shins with high heels unless this video gets 10,000 likes I know I'm desperate. Yes, I know I'm begging. No, I don't feel bad press the like button Otherwise, I will actually be kicked in the shin by Susan herself and she's wearing high heels You guys don't want me to get kicked by Susan wearing high heels. Okay, that is a pain I would not wish upon my worst enemy. Today we're gonna be talking about the cringiest kid that I had in my class. I have a lot of cringy kid stories, okay? I have this person, I have a girl who swore that she was the, the next big Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, teen social media star that I'm probably gonna talk about tomorrow. We're bringing it back, baby. We're going to my roots. We're gonna talk about some old-fashioned cringe. But today we're gonna be talking about an emo kid. There was a lot of emo kids at my school. I don't know why it was. Like, my school had a really good theater program and we had, like, a magnet program for it. So a lot of kids at our school were there for theater. I don't know what it is about theater kids, but for some reason they just have a very high emo population It's probably the fact they have to listen to other theater kids sing so much that makes them want to hate their life But you know regardless for some reason at my school There was a massive amount of emos and uh, I don't know I don't really hate my life like I'm not an emo kid by any means I went through a bad bad emo phase in middle school But I think by the time you're 17 18 years old you could probably grow out of the no oh, I hate my life when you're from an upper middle class neighborhood like it's just kind of cringy to be like uh, Life's so hard my dad bought me a new toy Toyota instead of a Mercedes uh. But regardless there were plenty of those kids in my school who would just find a way to hate their life I don't know it, it was an emo cringe squad They actually did not get along with the werewolf crew I made another story time a while ago about kids There was like this werewolf group at my school that was super weird But regardless you know there was a lot a lot of emo kids and they had their very own clique And they were like a little gang almost except instead of you know being intimidating and being able to like fight and run the yard Like a real gang they would just complain a lot and sing my chemical romance lyrics at the top of their lungs in the hallway and god like why why do people sing in the hallway if they can't sing if you are tone deaf and sound like i don't know helen keller trying to sing the alphabet just don't open your mouth you don't have to sing no one's going to be impressed with you you're not good at singing and that's okay not everyone is good at singing at the end of the day so shut up just go to class. You don't need to sing in the hallway. But for some reason, emo kids would always, like, sing in the hallway. I'm getting off topic here. I'm gonna get back on now. That's important. But, uh, if you can't sing, don't sing. It's really simple. But regardless, this gang of emo theater kids would hang out in the in the front of the lunchroom, like, in this little courtyard thing we had in our school. And, uh, they had a leader. And this was the type of kid, like, he literally looked like the dude in the thumbnail, right? He would wear eyeshadow to school every day and, like, these weird designs. He had contacts that made his eyes white. The ultimate cringy edgelord. Like, if someone was like, ah, oh, write down what you think the meaning of life is in English class, you'd be like, life is meaningless. It's just an illusion of happiness. Uh, my mom hates me. They, my dad and my stepdad get along. Life's so hard and everybody knows. Like, listen, life is hard. I'm not trying to say that you can't go through hard times, but something about being like, I'm just gonna color shapes on my eyelashes with eyeliner and then talk about how hard my life is all the time. It's just cringy. Like, look, everybody goes through hard times. Everybody goes through stuff, but uh, it's not an excuse to use it to get attention because you don't get enough of it at home, okay? Like, cool your jets there, Benny Hanna. Y you're just like the rest of us. But regardless, the, the leader of this little emo gang would wear eyeliner and cool designs and, and he had had white contacts and he would talk about how meaningless life is it's all an empty void deprived of all love and sensation except for the few lucky ones that managed to work as a cog in the machine and I'm not gonna be a cog dude it, it was literally like he watched a, a weird fan fiction version of the matrix and just sort of quoting it like uh yeah Neo take the blue pill it's all not real it's all fake it's not real reality and he was like damn bro that's so deep I'm gonna start talking about how people are cogs and machines and I'm just gonna look so deep so obviously mr. deep guy was just a cringe lord and I don't have a problem keeping my mouth like I, I do have a problem keeping my mouth shut I don't have a problem calling people out when they're being cringy I don't know why it's just like I, I can't I can't deal with it if I don't point it out it blows my mind or I have to laugh at it it's one of the two like I can't take it seriously or I have to call it out like if you really sit there oh life's so hard I'm going to giggle I'm, I can't take you seriously unless your life's hard like listen if your life's hard and you're going through a hard time and you're like wow you know, I'm just going through a lot. By all means, I get it. I get it. Life can be really, really hard sometimes, and that's okay. But when you color on your face to make it look like, I don't know, a four-year-old gently trying to color in the sun, like, outside the lines and stuff, and just complain about everything in your life sucking, yeah, I I'm gonna make fun of you. I'm sorry. I don't feel bad. And me and this guy really already did not get along, because, it's like I said, he had a whole little crew of emo kids that were underneath him. Like, he was the emo overlord, all right? Like, when they went to Hot Topic, he got all the coupons. That was the deal. That probably was their deal, to be honest with you. 
you. It was something stupid like that. Regardless, he was kind of the leader of this emo gang. And I had already gotten into like a little bit of a scuffle, not a fight, but just kind of like yelled at one of his friends and, and got his friend in trouble once in art class. So me and this guy did not get along. Me and the whole emo kids did not get along because I just, I don't know. They, they just made me cringe a lot and we got into beef. Okay, that's all there was to it. Me and this guy already did not get along. And like I said, in our English class, he would write poems about how hard life is when it wasn't the assignment and then would read it in front of the class. And I'm sorry, that's just cringy. I can't take you seriously. Like if your assignment is to write an essay about Frankenstein and then you get up and share a haiku about how hard life is because Dan, your stepdad, watches too many NFL games with your mom so you and her can't write poetry together. That's not the assignment, bro. Cool your jets. Like, I, I don't know. It, it was just weird. So one day, homeboy is reading some poetry in front of the English class and he says something along the lines of like, no one will ever understand my pain and then rhymed it with rain and I just started laughing and the entire classroom just turns and gives me like this dirty look and I'm sorry but this dude has has hieroglyphics on his forehead in eyeliner and is rhyming pain with rain while standing in front of a class in high school when the assignment was to write our thoughts and feelings about Jurassic Park, which is what we were reading. I can't take you seriously, bro. So he says to me, he's like, oh, do we have a problem here? And I'm like, no, dude, it's just kind of corny. And he's like, what's corny about my emotions? And I said, the fact that you're telling them to people you don't know. Like, you don't need to overshare with me, dude. I, I do not know you like that. Like, you don't need to tell me that you're crying every night because you miss your mom and dad or like what? I don't I don't even know. I don't think his parents even were divorced to be fair like it was basically he was whining about the fact that his mom and dad didn't understand him. I was just using the stupid Dan watching NFL joke, okay? But like, I don't know you like that. You don't need to tell me that your mom and dad don't understand you and you cry every night from the rain and the pain while you're feeling so insane. It's insufferable. Like, n no one cares, dude. I don't know you. You don't You don't need to share this with me. But regardless, I kind of pointed out that it's weird that the assignment was to write our feelings about Jurassic Park and he had the need to get up and read poetry about mommy and daddy not liking him or whatever. I don't even know. And I, I obviously, he did not like this very much. And He's like, it's an expression of my inner emotions. And I was like, dude, no one cares about your inner emotions. You don't know us. We don't know you. No one is sitting here going, I wonder what hieroglyphic on his forehead boy is thinking about his home life situation. Like, bruh, if you got problems, go to a counselor. They have counselors at school for a reason. Me sitting here trying to read Jurassic Park, I'm not your therapist. Like, if you got issues, go talk to somebody else. And so obviously, me telling this kid to go get a therapist because his English class does not care about his problems makes him pretty pissed off because he's been reading poetry all year and I've just been silently judging and giggling at it the entire time. So he gets all pressed and starts asking me if I have a problem, like, do I really want to take it outside or whatever? And I'm just laughing, like, I'm laughing while I'm telling him all this, because imagine some emo kid that you just said his poetry sucks and you don't care, being like, uh, you got a problem, bro? So whatever, my English teacher gets up and says that I'm being extremely rude to him for he's just trying to share his feelings. And, and listen, I need to clarify this because I feel like people are going to think I'm a jerk. If your feelings are hurt and, and you need somebody to vent to, that's cool. Don't do it in front of your entire English class when the assignment is to write about dinosaurs, okay? Like, imagine you're just sitting in class ready to write about dinosaurs and a book about dinosaurs in an amusement park. And then homeboy starts pulling up, rapping, and crying about, oh, my, my life's so hard. Like, it's just not the time and the place. There's a time and the place to talk about your feelings, and in front of a bunch of strangers who don't care is, is not the time or the place. It's just not cool. Like, you're just weird. Like I said, go talk to your friends. I know you have a whole crew of emo kids that would listen to your problems. That that's not me. But whatever, I guess I was the rude one. She tells me to go out in the hallway while he finishes his poem, and I'm like, gladly, dude, anything to get away from this bar fest. So I go out in the hallway and whatever, and I come back in, and she's like, you need to apologize. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna apologize. I don't feel bad. I would apologize if I felt bad, if I really felt like I did something wrong, but me just telling the kid to do the assignment, shut up, write about dinosaurs, and not write about his problems is nothing I'm, I'm not going to apologize. And she's like, Ryan... You need to apologize. I'm like, I'm not going to apologize. That that I'm sorry. It's not personal, except it is. I don't care about your problems and your constant whining about them. I'm not going to apologize to you because I have nothing to be sorry for. And he says, it's fine. Simpletons don't understand the deep art of poetry. Which I mean, you know what? Fine. Maybe I was a bit of a jerk for whining about this kid's poetry. But if you're going to call me stupid for not understanding your poetry... I, I know you're not talking to me. We're just gonna pretend that you didn't rhyme pain with rain like the most basic white boy Tumblr poetry of all time. Oh, you think I didn't notice that? You thought you were really slick, huh? That's right, everybody. He rhymed pain with
Elizabeth Rain and had the balls to say that I was too simple minded to understand it. So that pisses me off because if you're gonna call me stupid, at least point out something stupid I've done. I've done a lot of stupid things. There's plenty of things to call me stupid for, but saying your poetry is so complex I can't understand it when you ride pain with rain is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And I let him know what I think by just telling him, dude, I'm not stupid. Your poetry just sucks balls. Where's my exact words, which of course does not go over well uh, because I had one of these English teachers that was convinced that everybody deserves stories and everybody deserves to have their voice heard. Truth of the matter is, if you suck at poetry, don't write poetry. And if you rhyme pain with rain to tell me about your problems, your poetry blows and I have no, no reason to want to listen to it at all. But I guess I pushed Cringe Lord's button a little bit too hard because that's it. And he goes, honestly, man, you really just don't know who you're messing with, bro. And I'm like, oh yeah, right, vampiric touch, hot topic poster looking ass. I am not afraid of you. And he's like, whatever, I guess we'll settle this at lunch. And I'm like, then I guess we will settle this at lunch, you freak. And before anyone's like, oh, he's so mean, you're, he's so mean, you're a big bully. Yeah, I make fun of people. You're right. If you're cringy and I call you out and then you have the balls to call me stupid for not understanding your garbage poetry, I'm gonna be mean. I'm not gonna be nice to you. He was mean too. Shut up. You can see the comment now. Maybe you're just a bully. Maybe you should shut up. You, you ever thought about that? And for everybody who's not commenting, I'm a bully and agrees with me that it's not my job to listen to crappy poetry. Thank you for having a brain. But regardless, you know, he's saying that uh, we, we're gonna settle this at lunch. So I'm like, all right, I guess we're gonna settle this at lunch. And I totally forget about it because that's like second period and I had lunch after fourth period. So to be honest with you, I was not expecting to walk into lunch and see some emo kids ready to fight me. I was just not ready for it. I go to lunch, I do my thing, I'm eating lunch with my friends, and I feel this darkness behind me, like this dark voodoo energy, and I turn around, and sure enough, emo boy and his whole gang is sitting there, and they're just kind of chilling, and he's looking at me, and he goes, are you ready to settle this? I'm like, what, what are we settling, bro? And he's like, you disrespected my poetry, so I challenge you to combat. This emo kid said, challenge you to combat, like I'm an 18th century senator trying to 1v1 flintlock pistol only in an ultimate battle to the death. Yeah, I challenge you to combat, bro. Get your Mortal Kombat 3 looking nose out of here, dude. You look like a Matrix backup character. And whatever, I'm just not in the mood to deal with this right now. Like, I'm, I'm really just not. I'm like, dude, I don't want to fight you. And he's like, oh, what? You're going to talk about my poetry and then not fight me? And I was like, yeah, I mean, kind of. It's That's the plan. And he goes, get up. And he, like, takes my chair and dumps me out of it. Like, picks up the back and, like, pushes it. He doesn't, like, pick up the chair, but you know what I mean? Like, when you push the chair up and the person kind of slides out of it. And at this point, I'm getting pissed. And I'm like, dude, can you just knock it off, please? And I am by no means a fighter. I don't consider myself a fighter. I, I I have not won many fights by any means. I've been in a few, have not won many. I think I probably got a 50% win loss rate when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat situations, okay? I am definitely not a Fortnite player out here beating people to death with a pickaxe. But I know for a fact that I can beat this kid up because he is the only person in the world who is skinnier than me and also writes poetry. And I know I can beat up a dude who writes poetry that rhymes rain with pain. I know that for a fact. So I turn around and I'm like, if you want to do this, we can do this. And he goes, I want nothing more. More. And like drops into a combat stance like you know when they do the squat like arm above the head at a 90 degree angle Looking like you watched a Bruce Lee movie and went oh, so that's how you fight like that is what this dude looks like And so I'm laughing again and he goes to try to kick me in the face He goes for just a kick in the face that was his opening move, all right? Like, he was playing chess, and his opening move was kick to the forehead, 99 points of damage. This is not a Pokemon battle. And, of course, he is by no means athletic. He has not had any, like, martial arts training. So I just step back, and his foot misses my face. And I give him this weird look, like, did you just try to kick me in the face? I didn't say it, but this, the look of, like, really? Really, dude? Really? And he gets back in the combat stance and says, let it begin. Like, I don't know where this dude got his fight interaction from, but he was no joke acting like we were a final boss in a video game. 1v1 here and it just made me even angrier i was like this dude looks like a gremlin and he's jumping around like rah, rah, combat rah, 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 boss fight rah. so whatever he's in this combat stance walking in circles around me like like they do in a kung fu movie i'm telling you that's the only fight experience this kid has had is watching people fight in kung fu movies and he does the thing with his hand like the come here movement like where you take your hand and you put your palm up and you go like ho ho come here combat me please ho ho and I'm like, dude, this is, this is whatever. So whatever. He gets up and starts charging at me. And like I said, he's doing all this fancy combat stuff. He's doing like the come here movement. And he gets close to me and I just punch him in the face, like as hard as I can. And I hit him square in the nose and his nose starts to bleed. And I didn't even mean to hit him. Like, like, okay, I did. Obviously when I went to punch him, my goal was to hit him. But I swear the kid acted like I like unlocked my secret double extra YY combat move to just extra, extra punch him just in the face because he like pulls back and goes, huh? 
a worthy opponent. And I'm like, dude, this is not an anime. We are fighting. Shut up. Stop talking. Go write a poem about how I just punched you in the nose and now it's bleeding. And whatever. So he's like, a worthy opponent. Like, I, like we're the next Hokage or something. I don't know what's going on. I'm as confused as you are. But anyways, this dude is like swearing that this is finally a worthy opponent. Haha, -ha, someone to master my combat skills with. So he comes back around like a ninja and I just punch him in the face again. And at this point, my Dean is like trying to pull us apart. And I'm just seeing red. I'm pissed. So I'm just swinging at him. I'm kicking. Like, I'm doing everything I can to try to just beat this kid. And he's like, ah, a worthy opponent. Like, he's still talking in some anime voices. I don't know what his game plan was, but he just sounds stupid. So I'm pissed off. They finally get us apart. And he's like, well, I guess we have this settled. I was like, you lost. You lost. He's like, well, ha, huh, we'll let history be the judges of that. Like, I don't even, uh, something stupid about, I guess we'll let other people be the judge of that or whatever. And everyone agrees that I beat him up because he was doing weird stuff. I punched him in the face twice. It was not like a super intense fight. No NBA Matumbo, WWE SmackDown stuff, but it was definitely Definitely, definitely a fight nonetheless. I fought a crazy emo kid in one, punched him in the face repeatedly, which I guess is as close to a fight as you can get. Uh, I actually had a couple more interactions with this kid, but I'll save those for another video because this is getting long. If you want more stories about this kid, let me know in the comment section down below. I, I would appreciate it. But on that note, that's going to do it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Comment, like, subscribe if you're new, all that good stuff, and hopefully I'll see you soon with another video. My name is Scrubby. Don't get anyone pregnant, and if you do, make sure they're hot. I'm out. Peace.